if the GH bullshit was true and the GH caused insulin resistance, then the magnitude of that spike would be contingent on the amount of GH I used. But it ain't. Warning. You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. Greetings, Earthlings. Like, subscribe, and share this video. Share with a friend. Share with enemies. Share with people who think they know everything. Spread it like herpes. Also, speaking of herpes, I am a medical doctor and I could be your doctor. That only requires you to click the link in the description box. I can order you blood work, I can read the blood work, I can treat any illnesses. I basically, it's like an HRT clinic that's a one-man army. Also, I do coaching. Dr. Karina Dotson and I have a coaching business called Apex Coaching. So if you sign up with me, you get coaching, which is nutrition, programming, competition prep, or lifestyle coaching, as well as all the medical stuff. So you have three people, two doctors, in one business. Greetings, Earthlings. It is I, Todd Lee, MD. I'm a medical doctor, IFBB pro bodybuilder, and biochemist. Due to this unique combination of skill sets, I feel I'm appropriately suited to help you with your anabolic knowledge and needs. Today's topic is continuous glucose monitor. What is a continuous glucose monitor? It is a glucose monitor that is continuous. It is a way to continuously monitor your glucose. There is an app on your phone. I use this brand called Stello. The reason why I use this brand is because it is over the counter. You just have to lie and say you don't inject insulin and they'll sell it to you. And this is my six hour thing. The green part is the good part. And it goes from left to right because that's what we do in, in America. And you can see what my glucose levels are. Each one of those spikes are when I had a meal. It lets me know, for instance, see right here, there's a spike. That spike that happened around 4 p.m., that was my first meal of the day. Something I've noticed is the first meal of the day, my blood sugar shoots through the fucking roof. And then each meal after that, my body's prepared for it more. I haven't figured out how to mitigate this as well, whether it's not so much like using more Lantus, using less Lantus, adjusting my GH dose, adjusting my GH timing, whether I do cardio first, whether I do cardio after, I have not managed to mitigate this, which goes against all of the myths you've been sold that if the GH bullshit was true and the GH caused insulin resistance, then the magnitude of that spike would be contingent on the amount of GH I used. But it ain't. <laughs> There's nothing to do with it. That the idea that you could go for a walk, the 10 minute walks, the stand efforting walks, and it's going to blunt this. Shit don't work. The magnitude of the spike is contingent off of how much carbs you have, which is if I have 160 carbs, the spike gets taller and goes, it doesn't go, it goes up at the same rate. The acceleration, the slope is the same, but the, the maximum height it reaches is different about how many carbs I have. Other things that matter is if I eat vegetables first and carbs last that meal, the fat, adding fat to the meal, that blunts it. Karina also suggested I switch back from jasmine to basmati rice, which I had totally forgotten. And she said that helps. What I've noticed is with basmati rice, you use a lot more water. So two cups of cooked basmati rice has less actual rice in it than two cups of cooked jasmine rice. With jasmine, I do it a one-to-one -one ratio rice to water with basmati i do it a one to two ratio rice to water so a cup of rice a cup of jasmine rice cooked 150 grams is about 50 grams of carbs but a cup of basmati rice cooked is more like 33 carbs so is it the glycemic index of the rice that's different or is the glycemic index actually the scientists fucked up and what you're really getting is less insulin load because there's less rice, more water. Either way, 150 grams of cooked basmati rice generates less of a spike than 150 grams of cooked jasmine rice. Now, if I equated it for in for actual carbohydrates, maybe it would be equivalent. Maybe it's got the same insulin index. Maybe it has the same glycemic index. But because we're measuring cooked rice instead of non-cooked rice, you get different results. However, these are the many... These are the experiments I do on myself to figure this shit out as I track 
So right now I got a 120 blood glucose and I was 131 average yesterday and 67% was in the healthy zone. So this is the pet, this is yesterday and, or this is today. And this is the average over the last three days it was 144. So it's interesting to see, like what I've noticed is if I'm getting angry when I'm driving, my glucose goes up because cortisol goes up. When I'm training, you'd think that it would flat, would just tank. I'd be like, yeah, and just like fall apart. Mm -mm. It goes into like the 90s or 80s, and then it hovers there. In other words, it gets low enough to where my body thinks it's too low, and then cortisol kicks in and keeps me going. Then after I'm done training, then it tanks. That's why I get hangry after I get done lifting, and I have to eat immediately. When I'm sleeping, depending on how good my sleep was that night, is how much spikes I had. In other words, you get more cortisol if you're getting up to pee a lot. So this is pretty valuable. What I have noticed is the amount of lantus I use has an impact, which you'd expect. But then that means I'm not as insulin resistant as one might think. The point of this video is to tell you how great the CGM is. And now you don't need a prescription to get it. And I got mine from Stello. So how can this benefit you? By knowing what your blood glucose is, you can see how you react to stress, training, foods, and you have a better idea of how to eat your meals. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Fusion Regenerative Therapies, where I am the Director of Human Performance. This is the practice in which I practice medicine. I uh, will be able to order you blood work and read your blood work and help you with therapy as needed based upon the results of your blood work. Please click the link to get a consult with me and I can help you optimize your performance. Thank you. For instance, what I was doing in prep so that I could at least feel full after a meal is I only had three meals a day and each meal was like 100 grams of protein and a shit ton of carbs not a shit ton of carbs. It was like a lot of my carbs for the day. I it was like 50, 40, 50 carbs, but I was only having three meals, but I wouldn't have any fat so I could get more carbs. I don't, I don't have data from that, but I know now from what I've seen, that would have created a huge spike and then a crash. And then I would have been miserable. Whereas if now I understand one of the reasons to have multiple meals throughout the day. And I knew this before, and I've explained this to people. I just didn't really care is to keep stable blood values. If you have half 50 grams of protein and you have 25 carbs and you had like 10 grams of fat six times over the course of the day with lots of vegetables like 100 grams of vegetables each meal and you ate the protein and the veggies then the carbs you'd have nice stable blood values you wouldn't feel hungry you wouldn't be cranky you wouldn't be mean you probably would sleep better but by doing what i did i was storing some of it as fat then i was burning um, possibly glycogen and muscle in between meals, hangry and fucking up my sleep, which then would cause even worse problems with leptin and cortisol. So the continuous glucose monitor is an extremely useful tool. I think every bodybuilder should have it. Anyone who's serious about losing fat should have it. Even if you have a coach, even if you're my client, it would still benefit for you to have that because if you're smarter than me and you could figure out how to get a report, because I can't screenshot this, but it would be cool if you could screenshot it. Then we would know exactly what the spikes look like. And we would know, okay, that meal is working. That meal is working. That meal is not working. Or why are you doing it that way? You're supposed to have your pre-workout meal, pre-workout, and your post-meal and post-workout. So, well, I work out a different time of day sometimes. It's like then you move them. As you can see from the spikes, the carbs are loaded pre-workout and they're loaded past post-workout when you'd be able to use them and absorb them. And the fact that you're taking them a different time of day, you're just storing them as fat. The, the slope on the way up is how rapidly it goes from your intestines to your bloodstream. The slope on the way down is how quickly it goes from your intestines, I mean, from your bloodstream into your fat cells or your glycogen supplies, depending on what you have a vacancy for. And that's a much more complicated video than the topic of this video. How much does it cost? Two sensors is a hundred bucks. Each sensor is supposed to last um, uh, 14 days. So a box of two sensors should last you a month. So a hundred bucks a month, that's what it costs. Now my second, my first sensor, it died after one day. 
Why? I don't know. But here's the thing. It comes in this little thing that you inject it. I'll probably do an unboxing for this product I'm with, my, with my next sensor. But what happens is it comes in this little thing. It's like, it's almost like the size of this. And you put it up to the arm and you push a button and it injects the sensor into your arm. Now, I don't have a lot of fat there, so I ended up getting muscle. You're not supposed to get muscle, but I did get muscle. And you're supposed to use the back of your arm, not your stomach, where it's assumedly the fattest. I'm going to try my ass because I saw in their FAQs that there's, some people do inject it into their ass. And I have way more fat on my ass than I do my arm. So that thing that you inject it with has a serial number on it. When it breaks, if it breaks, you have to put the serial number in the requisition form to get a replacement. I didn't know that, and I threw out my thing because I'm like, it's turning my arm. What the fuck do I need this for? And it says in the directions, hang on to this. You might need it, but it doesn't say why you need it. So I didn't hung on to it, hang on to it. So now I'm out 50 bucks. But if it takes a shit on you, it stops working before that 14-day point. You can go online and talk to the chat bot, and it'll give you a form, and you can enter the serial number in the form. And they're supposedly will send you a replacement because these things should last 14 days. One of the things is, is that if you take a bath, it can get wet and it has like a plastic sealant over it, but the plastic sealant might leak. You know, I didn't have it. I mean, like my, I'm, I'm not flexible either because I'm not flexible or my arm's big or whatever, but it's not easy for me to put the seal on my arm. I'm not like some girl who can lift her arm over her head and actually touch the back of her arm in the mirror, like face, like pretend this is the back of my arm. Girls can go like this and look in the mirror and actually do stuff to the back of their arm. They're not like this. And this is as high up as I can get. So I think I blew their on enough about this. Usually I don't ask people to ask questions in the comment section. This, feel free to ask questions in the comment section because I do not feel confident that I covered all the details of this. And this is such a bizarre thing. I don't think that there's going to be stupid questions. This is a very new and complex subject. So I can understand why some of these things might be confusing. All right. If you want coaching, click on the link in the description box for a consult. If you don't watch coaching, but you still want to ask me a question, click on the link in the description box. And if you want the greatest supplements in Midgard or any of the nine realms, go to ValhallaLabs.com, get your Thor's hammer, get your Fenris Fury, or get your Wrath of the Valkyrie. Really quick, on cycle or post cycle therapy. If you don't want your nuts to shrivel up when you use steroids or HRT, get this. Also, you may not even need HRT if you use this. This, this is to burn fat, the most powerful fat fat burner ever. And this is the best pre workout in the world. It's a non stim, so it's not going to keep you up at night. A lot of people don't understand that just because you slept after using caffeine doesn't mean you got as much out of your sleep. Caffeine is not good. You shouldn't use caffeine. All right. May the force be with you. Toodles.